So if you're researching a book or yeah, a novel, a script or whatever, you know that you can save web pages to your Mac, your iPhone, your iPad, and you can sort them out later. Or much better, you can take all of that research, websites, PDFs, anything, and add it directly to Scrivener. Please see the 58 Keys, Three Biscuit Guide to Scrivener for more details. But you're not always researching, are you? You're not always thinking about, well, maybe you are actually always thinking about your But if, okay, if being a writer actually means we never shut up and we never stop, there are times when we at least try. And when we try to stop working, I, mean, I don't know about you, but I like reading. Specifically, I like reading all of those long articles I came across online I didn't have time to read when I saw them. I like deep diving into magazine little book length pieces that again, yeah, I found online and then lost because I didn't have time to read it at that moment. I haven't though lost one of those articles in a very long time and instead I have many times, so many times now, been able to flop down in a chair or a couch on a Sunday morning and read my iPad like it is the very best magazine ever made because of what are called read it later services. They're just excellent for us as writers. They are free or very low cost and they are just the other side of this remarkably short title sequence. Hello, I'm William Gallagher and this is 58 Keys, which as ever, as always, is for readers like you and me who read on and use Macs and iPhones and iPads. Ah, readers and writers. It's practically the same thing, isn't it? Do subscribe by the way, because, well, on the one hand, we have so much to talk about, of course, but every time you watch a 58 Keys video, you and I get to put off writing for a few minutes. Now, read it later services. I believe that the term itself, read it later, you know, with the hyphens that you can hear in my voice, that that was coined by the developer of an app and a service called Instapaper. Since that came out, we've added, there are more graphical versions like one called Pocket. And we've also seen Safari implement much the same thing within the browser itself. So let me show you Instapaper, Pocket, Safari, and then the different one that I use. And that's not some, oh, keep watching for a cliffhanger ending kind of thing. I'll, I'll just tell you now, I use an app called Reader. In this case though, even though I've got reasons for that that I'll tell you, I would use any of the things that I'm going to show you now. I mean, I have. I've used them extensively. When you've seen what each of them does, then you, you'll see which one suits you. And I think you'll see why I also chose Reader at the end of it, even though I actually strongly recommend every one of these. That's a bit weird, isn't it, really? A, a, a software app around it where you recommend everything. Um, Instapaper, let me start with that. Um, as I say, I believe, and please tell me if you know I'm wrong, because I'd like to know, that Instapaper actually started all of this. Uh, it's an app for iPad and Mac, and there's iPhone as well, and there's an online version. And what happens with Instapaper is, well, first you come across something you want to, well, read later. And that, that could be in a browser on your Mac, could be in certain apps on your iPhone, your iPad, like Apple News, for example. Um, it's easiest to show you this uh, if we talk about the iPhone and the iPad first. Uh, there you are, you find an article or a web page, you want to read it, you can't read it now, wallop. Share it instead. Tap on the share icon in the app and with luck, Instapaper will be one of the destinations you can share it to if you've installed it. I don't like this word share. Actually, I think it's very confusing because it's not like I'm, I'm not sharing the article with you. For example, I'm saving it for me. But this is what Apple calls it, sharing, share sheets, share extensions. And they use this term actually to cover a lot of different things. And to be fair, I can't think of a better word. So share, it is. You share that article from wherever you were reading it into Instapaper. Now, I said, if you were lucky, you could do this. There's a very strong chance that the first time you try it, you won't be. Even when you've installed the Instapaper app, Instapaper app, it might not appear in that little list you go through. In which case, again, it's just the first time this happens, you swipe to the end, you tap on more, then you tap on the edit button, you find Instapaper in the long list, tap the green plus next to it, and you should be good to go. From now on, Instapaper, should appear in this that list in this share sheet list so you tap it you go about your business and then later even years later if you've got you know, a bit snowed under you can open the instapaper app on any of your devices or you can log into instapaper.com 
anywhere in the world. And there it is. There's the article. Read away, knock yourself out. Delete it when you're done, keep it forever. It's up to you. All of this is free. You can though subscribe to Instapaper Premium to uh, officially to get more features like the ability to search for text across all your articles you've saved, things like that. Really, I think it's so that you can support a great developer who has made a superb tool for writers and you support them by giving them $2.99 a month or $30 a year. I did say it was easiest to show you this on the iPhone and the iPad. Let me be clear that the Mac works exactly the same way once you've set it up. And actually, I don't know why, that's just a little bit, little bit more fiddly than it ought to be. Because you have to download a separate app. It's an app called Instapaper Save from the App Store. It's a free app. And then you run it precisely once. Through it, you add a Safari extension, which with your permission, adds a button to Safari. And now then there you are in Safari on your Mac and you find an article that you want to save. You click on the Instapaper button right there in your toolbox and it's done. That is great when it's set up. You just, you just have to know that you have to set it up and how to set it up. And I think the app developer could be a lot clearer. Actually, Instapaper's developer could make it, could make the app itself a bit prettier too, which is where Pocket comes in. Yeah, no, this isn't gonna take long at all. The Pocket app or the Get Pocket website, well, it works precisely the same way as Instapaper, I mean, Precisely. Yeah, except when you're looking through Instapaper at all the articles you've saved, yeah, I think that's a bit bare bones. Whereas Pocket, you save it the same way, but it shows you more images. It looks nicer, particularly on the iPad, although it does work across iPhone, iPad and Mac. Uh, with the Mac, again, actually there's a Safari extension, there's a button, but you can add it without popping off to find some other app to download first. I think the, the quick summary is they work the same way, but Instapaper reminds me of a newspaper. Pocket reminds me of a magazine. Pocket, again, by the way, is free, but you can pay $5 a month or $45 a year as a subscription. And actually, I should say that just as with Instapaper, this gets you some actual tools. So, uh, the ability to annotate articles, for example. But honestly, this time when we're talking about reading later, it's ways to relax rather than make notes. Which means, by the way, next, before the one I use most often, how about this? Let's look at the one you've definitely already got. Safari has a built-in read it later service called Reading List. It's okay, unless you fiddle about with it and then it's, it's all right. First, uh, here's how it works and you're gonna recognize this. You're reading a page, you want to read it later. On the iPhone or the iPad, bring up the control, actually on the Mac as well, uh, tap on the share icon. You see where this is going, don't you? With this share sheet open, scroll down on the iPhone and the iPad to add to reading list. Choose that and you're done, it's saved. Or rather, unless you do something else, what this really does is not save the article, it saves a bookmark to the article. When you go to read it again, you open it up, you tap on the bookmark icon tap, and away you go, except you're, you have to be online. If, you've been, if you're offline or if the article has been moved, you can't read it. This is a bookmark rather than a saved copy. And also actually, when you do have an internet connection and you tap on the article and you want to read it and, and you're taken off to read it online, it's then automatically removed from your reading list. So I suppose it's handy if you're really neat and tidy and always have a great internet connection. Yeah, less so if you're not and you don't. Uh, you can do a little something about this though. Before you start saving any articles to this read later service, you go to settings on your iPhone, or your iPad. I actually don't know how to do this on the Mac yet and choose Safari. Tap on that and then scroll way, 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 three times way down to the bottom and turn on automatically save offline. Now Safari, when you hit save this, saves a copy of the web page or the article as it is right at that moment and you can read that later with or without an internet connection. I find it a little fiddly. Sometimes it looks to me like it still goes off to retrieve the current version and maybe it tries that first. And inconsistencies, thing is, I, I'd get to know it better if I used it more, but I don't need to because Safari reading list, Pocket, Instapaper, they're all superb and I don't use them because I use Reader instead. 
Reader, it's a news, it's spelled with a double E in the middle. Reader is a news reading app, an RSS news reading app, which whenever I open it, pops off immediately to all 300 or more news sites I tend to read and come scampering back to tell me right away whether or not there's something new to read on, on, on any, on each, on all of them, whatever it turns out to be. Read is also where I handle my Google alerts. You know, this way writers can have, of having Google, Google constantly, constantly searching for whatever we've said and then tipping us off when it's found something. So with these two things, I'm in Reader a lot anyway, which means also just by sheer volume, I am sharing articles to myself from it more often than from anywhere else. And Reader has its own built-in read it later service. It's right there in the same app I use for most article reading. Plus, uh, this business of sharing a website that you saw in newspaper and pocket and safari, you can share any article from any site and from, from any app that allows sharing right into Reader. So it's my first call when I want to read new news and it's my first call when I want to save something to read later, which means it's also where I read it later. Reader for the Mac costs $10 and Reader for iPhone and iPad is $5. And I realize that's, you know, $15 when the others are available at least mostly for free. But on the one hand, it's $15. Software used to cost hundreds. And anyway, we're writers, aren't we? So we know what this is like. We need paying just as much as the people who write apps. Plus, I'm trying to work this out. Reader 5, the latest version, came out something like October 2029. I remember this because I made a very enthusiastic 58 Keys episode all about it, the instant I knew. So that's ages ago, call it a year to keep the maths simple. I've apparently paid 0.4 cents per day for an app that is crucial to my business that I use to access, and which is one of the most enjoyable reasons for having an iPhone or an iPad at all. I think I can be okay with $15. Oh, uh, one more thing uh, about Reader. Uh, notice this. It can include Instapaper. I don't actually remember adding that, nor am I 100% certain how I would go about it if I wanted to show you now. But all right, if in practice I tend to stick with Reader's own Read It Later service, the fact that you can aggregate Instapaper into it, that was originally yet another reason to go for Reader. Now, I am sure that if you don't already have a way to save articles to read later, that you will relish doing it. You'll relish using one of these services. And I'm pretty certain, actually, that you're going to forget you've saved articles and you're going to amass this ridiculous amount of reading material when you do suddenly remember you've got it all waiting for you. Still, apparently that's what holidays are for. Listen, that's it for this edition of 58 Keys. Thank you very much for watching. Now go read some things and write some things, okay? Take care of yourself, and I'll see you soon.